Good evening, everybody. Yeah, Haley, we're all we're always running late. We only get technical difficulties about three minutes before we have to turn everything on. Okay, we are going to kind of do a just a script notes type session real quick on what we're going to be looking at this weekend. Uh, and as I say, usually our one-hour presentations on the weekend usually turn into two or three hours. So, uh, yeah, so Bill, this is kind of a, a, a cut-down uh, version of what we did today, and then we'll go into the live charts afterwards. So here is what is kind of the, uh, oh, the crux of candlestick analysis. The candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. And I highlighted specific time frame because they work on, oh, Gary's lost sound already. They work on any time frame, whether you're trading on the one minute, five minute, 10 minute, hourly, weekly, daily, whatever. So the, uh, I used to trade, and I uh, keep telling people, I used to trade the E-minis off the one minute, three minute, 10 minute cart chart combination. During the day, if things get a little bit slow, which they don't seem to, I'll trade the soybeans, cattle, dollar off the 10 minute chart. And I'll do a brief, uh, uh, review of how I did that. So we're going to kind of real take a quick look at day trading, mainly because we're getting a lot of people asking, well, should we be just day trading when this market is whipsawing? So at least you want to have something to act as a high probability format. Uh, Bill, yes, I was going to get to that. Often get people saying, should we start shorting here? And that's why I'm saying you better have confirmation. Apparently, there is a uh, report out of a Chicago hospital that they're using a medicine that is taking people out of this virus thing extremely quickly with no side effects. And that has put the, uh, the futures up over 800 points. So that's why the uh, investor sentiment is always got that that last confirmation that as long as we're trading above the T line, uh, we're in an uptrend. So here's two ways to use day trading. The first one is for the people that want to just do a day trade, meaning you get in the morning, get it out before the end of the afternoon. Is that on the internet anywhere? Uh, I saw it on one of the financial news stations, and and I think they just interviewed a doctor who has been using the technique. Yes, uh, I have a buddy who's, oh, uh, I don't know if it's his son-in-law or maybe somebody dating his daughter who works for Gilead, and he's told them, you want to be investing in this company. So I'm going to, we'll look at that, uh, says there, it has a good results. All right. All right, so, all right, we'll get, well, let's get to that when we get to the live charts. So let's, here it goes through the canned stuff. Day trades, when you get in in the morning, you're looking for the best trade so you can get out sometime during that same day. Or you're trading off the intraday charts, which work just as effectively as a daily chart. Are you sharing a screen or a chat? 
Uh, no, I'm sharing the screen. Haley, up at the very top, are you sure you're on? Clicked on uh, screen sharing versus slides. Yep, go up to the very top of your screen and make sure you're on screen sharing. You are on screen sharing and you're not seeing any live charts. But you can see me on the side, right? Only, oh, if you're only seeing chats, slide your, uh, go up to the top of your chats and slide it down so you get the uh, screen. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Okay. Now where are we? All right. So intraday trading. So what we're looking for and what we're going to be going through this weekend is how you get set up for that high probability trade setup and knowing what to do when you see it occurring or the results occurring. All right. So for some of you new folks, the T-line is the most effective trend indicator you're probably going to ever come across. I've, uh, I've used Bollinger Bands. I've used uh, anything you can think of. Fibonacci retracement, uh, 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 MACD, anything you can think of I've used. But here's the most powerful one. And what is the T-line? It has kind of Fibonacci characteristics. It's the eight exponential moving average. So this, I use this screen to give you the most important statement of candlestick analysis. But if you don't remember anything from tonight, all you have to do is remember this screen. That if the candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment, and the T-line is a natural support and resistance level of investor sentiment. When you combine the two, you've got an extremely powerful combination. Uh, AZ, no, I don't use Hike and Ashy because it's kind of a vanilla method. And it's probably for somebody that's going to trade longer term. If you're trying to use it for short term, it, the price has already moved by the time you're, you're uh, oh, what do I want to say, vanillaized uh, Indicators on Hike and Ashy have turned around. Uh, it was, oh, it was probably 15 years ago that I helped write some of the formulas for Hike and Ashy for a group of doctors out in uh, near San Antonio. But I've never used them because, again, they're more for long, what I would consider longer term trading. Okay, so here's a very simple rule of the T-line. T-line is, if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. Conversely, if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. I tell people, don't take my word for it. Put it on your charts. It's very easy. It's just like putting on any other moving average and see how much or how effective that that trend indicator is. I advocate it because being one of the worst investors in the world before candlesticks came along, candlestick signals at least turned my trading around from being a consistent loser to started making a little bit of money and but it was at least starting to consistently make money. But then when I applied the T-line, which the uh, benefit of candlestick charts is we know the signals work or we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. On which time frame is the T-line applicable? All of them. It's still the natural force and re or, uh, support and resistance level for all time frames. Now I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so I was making good money with candlesticks. I was out of myself. But because candlestick signals are the basis of 
where investor sentiment is changing, if somebody says put XYZ indicator on your chart and see how it works, you can. If it doesn't work, you take it back off. But you don't have to change your whole trading strategy because you know the basis of your strategy should be the signals themselves. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. We call it the T line because it's kind of the trigger line. Stochastics. My stochastics are 1233. Very simple observation by the Japanese rice traders. Where do you want to, if you see a buy signal in the oversold condition, the probabilities are pretty strong that you've seen a reversal. If you see a sell signal in the overbought condition, the probabilities are pretty strong you're now in a downtrend. So on the other side of that analysis or that definition, if you see a buy signal in the overbought condition, it doesn't mean very much. Or if you see a sell signal in the oversold condition, it doesn't mean very much. Uh, so the T-line equals the 8 exponential moving average. What are the aver averages? Okay, the other averages. Let me get back to... Hold on for a second. Let me see if I've got one coming up. I do. Okay. Uh, hold on for one second and I'll get to those. What are the sell signals? Haley, there's 12 major signals. You've got six buy signals and six sell signals. That is your bricks and mortar. That's your bread and butter uh, of candlestick analysis. Learn those. There's 50 or 60 signals in the candlestick universe. If you just learn the 12 major signals, you'll have the uh, probably the visual recognition of the what we why we call them the 12 major signals. You don't have to take mental time and energy trying to learn the other 50 or 60 signals. They don't occur often enough to want to spend a whole lot of time. However, I tell people, go back through uh, the first chapters of each one of my book and just look at those other signals. Not so you have to really bear down and learn them, just visually recognize that they're a signal. So the next time you might see one on a chart, you at least know it's a signal and you can go back and say, all right, what, what's that one mean? But don't spend a lot of mental time and energy. Learn the 12 major signals. Six longs and six shorts. Candlesticks don't know what time frame they are measuring. Right. That's why they put that first uh, frame on. What are we on? Ten. This one. Candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame, whether it's the one minute or the one month or anything in between. So if you keep coming back to that definition, you're always going to kind of keep your own mind in a, a good disciplined uh, uh, condition. So there are candlestick truisms also. Remember, we just said you can stay long until you see a uh, if you see a buy signal, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. With the caveat that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. So that makes sell signals in the overbought condition. Again, my stochastics are 12.33. Overbought is when it's above the 80 line. Oversold is when it's below the 20 line. So if you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought condition and that far away from the T-line, human nature says it's probably you're probably going to see some selling. If, and what's our doji rule? If you see a doji, it's going to move in the direction how they open it after a doji. So you see a doji in the overbought condition that far away from the T-line, and it opens lower, close it out. Why? Because that's what the Japanese race traders have observed for 400 years but that's telling you there's been a reversal. So you don't have to be a sophisticated technician. All you have to do is know what the signals look like and the simple rules that go with them. That's not a measure of any formulas or anything else. 
That's just simply what human nature does. Oh, sound cuts out William. If your sound is cutting out, go up to the round X up in the top right hand of your screen, log out and log right back in. Hopefully you'll get a better, uh, uh, better sound. Is anybody else having problems with the sound? Maybe I should cut off the video and help the bandwidth a little bit more. What is the uh, time frame is best, uh, Gerald? We'll get to that here in a minute. Whoops, people, good sound. No, 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 no. No? Okay. No. Uh, if you have a signal in an overbought condition, if you have a signal in an overbought condition, like what you are looking at right now, and this truism slide, can you go short? Yes, if you want to. But what you don't know is whether it's going to come back down here to the uh, T line and bounce back up and give us a J hook pattern. So if that's the case, if I was long with a long uh, and we uh, open here, maybe if I'm aggressive, I can go short and then see what happens down here. Okay, everybody's got good sound. All right. Don't cut the video. All right. Oh, because it was 8 o'clock when we started, so all the cuckoos and all the clocks went off. But don't worry, some of them could go off any time now. Okay, the other side of the coin. Well, this all comes back to the very simple analysis that we hear from the Japanese rice traders. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. When is it, if you were short from up here, when is it time to look for closing a short position? You're in the oversold area and you're starting to see indecision and you can also see it's happening right here on a major uh, uh, support level like the 200 day moving average and look how far away you are from the T line. You see any buying here, you cover your short position. Um, you gave the signal for staying short or long. What are your triggers for getting in in the first place? Oh, the sell signals. There's a bearish engulfing signal, belt hold type signal on this one. So there's just as many short positions as there are long positions. Uh, okay. So you gave a thing of staying short or long. Oh, very simple. Remember what we said right in the very beginning using the T line? Go back up here. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, that's when you start getting in. You see a candlestick sell signal, and this is kind of small, but you can see that they can't get back up above, above the T line. You stay short. And so, again, that's what we, uh, that's what we do every day is uh, recognize the six sell signals, which the doji is either long or short, or the buy signals. Again, where were we going to, where it becomes a very high probability buy area? When you're in the oversold area, you start seeing candlestick buy signals, you're that far away from the T-line, and you're seeing what everybody else is watching, the 200-day uh, moving average. Uh, we'll get to that right now, I think. So here are the moving averages that we use. The 200-day simple moving average, the 50-day simple moving average. The reason we have those on our charts is because every major money manager around the world uses those to make their decisions about their portfolio. So 
some people say, well, why don't you use the 200 exponential and the 50 exponential? Isn't that better? We're not using these to make our decisions. We're using these to see what everybody else's decisions are. The black line is your important one, the T line. Again, you see if a candlestick buy signal to close above the T line, it tells you you're going to be in an uptrend. The 34 EMA works reasonably well. I say reasonably well because these are your major moving averages. This is one that works uh, decently well. And that's the 34 exponential moving average. It's just, it just kind of works as a, a good indicator. Now, what are we using the indicators for? To see what everybody else's decisions are at those levels. And now, that's just an added benefit or an added uh, prospect. When this reversed and then did a J-hook pattern, if wave one is about the same as wave three, what do you think the logical target was that everybody's watching for? Probably at least up here the 50-day moving average. The little green line is the 3T line, 3 exponential moving average, which becomes much more effective the further away you move from the T line. That's one aspect that you can use it for. And then the next one is if you see buy signals and the 3T line comes up through the T line, that's just a little bit more added confirmation the uh, reversal has occurred. So down here I was telling, was I telling the chat room today, I was a little bit tentative after this drastic sell-off in the market that we saw this. And, and everybody's saying, oh, no, this market's still going much lower. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, every time we've seen this type of reversal, there's been a reversal. And on top of that, this is a morning star signal, one of the 12 major signals. The 3T line, a 3T line is the uh, 3 exponential moving average. So we have a morning star signal. We also have a doji sandwich, a bullish candle, a doji, a bullish candle with the doji sandwiched in between. Yeah, I, I don't know whether it's because it's a Fibonacci number, but it has Fibonacci characteristics. And I'll show you why here in the next slide. And the reason we use it is because it does seem to have natural support and resistance levels of human nature. And that pretty much can be uh, visualized or seen on a lot of charts. So when we, when I did a, uh, I think I did a YouTube back then that said, this is the bottom. Well, all the talking heads, experts on financial news stations were saying, no, we're probably going to go lower. We're going to have a double bottom. They're going to test new lows. I kept thinking, all right. This is the main reason why you don't ever listen to a so-called expert. Because this is, this is the most uh, relevant uh, expert, is the market itself. And all we're doing with candlestick signals is analyzing what the market's telling us. So this morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich gives you a morning sandwich, which is your McMuffin. So... That is a very strong reversal. Then we had our J-hook pattern with anticipating wave one and wave three being about the same that we're coming up here. Now look what it did today. Oh, man. Bah humbug. Ah, we'll do it on the live charts. But today, the Dow sold off right smack dab to the T-line. I thought I had that chart right up here. Well, Bob, maybe I, yeah. We'll get to that in the live charts. So if we know things like a doji sandwich have high probability results, and we also know the doji rule, the ro doji rule being the price is usually going to move in the direction how they open after a doji. So that told us on this day, we were probably going to have another strong day, the same magnitude as this candle when it opened positive and our stochastics are still heading up. So look how logical the analysis is. We're starting to see reversal signals. There's our 
Doji Harami, bullish confirmation, right smack dab off the 50, stochastics coming up. This just tells us there's a high probability there's a reversal. It closed right here at the T-line. So what happens if it opens positive the next day? What's confirming our reversal signals, number one. And number two, it's telling us the T-line is not acting as resistance anymore. It becomes a very high probability place to buy. Now, I had somebody even in today's uh, cyber uh, university training session ask, well, how many, how many bars does it take to tell you you've had a reversal? And that's where we have the great benefit of with candlestick investing. The answer to that is zero. If we see a reversal signal and it opens, confirms that signal the next day, we're buying immediately because that's the whole point of seeing the reversal signals in the first place, telling you there's been a change of investor sentiment. What do we want to see after a candlestick reversal signal? Bullish confirmation. So this does two things for us. Oh, it was a, Jake, it was a training uh, today where I guess they had five or six speakers and I was one of them. Now, they, these are, we have some of these tra trainings ourselves, this is my back scratcher, where we have on a Saturday, we might have five or six speakers come in. And the reason we do that is it gives people a different uh, or kind of a more rounded perspective of the different trading styles out there that you're not seeing them by bits and pieces. And it, I was just in one of those. Now what I forget what I was for talking about. Ah, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so the high probability, based upon where we are in stochastic, where we're seeing the signals, and opening, confirming our buy signal, tells us we've got a high probability reversal, which does two things for us. One, gets us in early. So if the trade is working, we're in early making a good profit. If it doesn't work, it's not a big move to tell us that the trade didn't work and we close it right back out. That's that process of cutting your losses short, letting your profits run, which every, every money manager tells everybody they should do, but they never tell you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. It's all common sense when you're using candlestick signals because we know if this opens positive, what it should be doing. It should be moving in this direction. Doesn't it take two candles because the candle needs to close to confirm the signal? Uh, well, we, uh, the signal can be one, two, or three candles. The confirmation is how they open it after that, after confirming the signal. For day trading, the entry and exit should be based upon daily chart signals and patterns. Well, that's what we use the, uh, yeah, Bob, that's what we're using them for. If we know this is a good buy, I mean a good reversal buy signal, and it opens positive and, this, and opening above the T line, yeah, at least if you're a day trader, you know I've got a high probability trade going in my direction. Today's candlestick signals. Today's candlestick signals. Oh, these, okay. I, um, uh, Brad, we're getting to that. And not so much the the uh, E-minis, but the uh, YMs, the, the Dow. So this is, if you're a day trader, what's the first thing we want to analyze? Which direction prices are moving? Again, there's our best friend signal, gap up. Scoop type pattern, break out of the 50. Doji, doji, then another positive open. So if we were looking at a candle like this or a candle like this, I don't know, was that today's or was there another one today? Oh, I'll have to, it's down here somewhere, I'll find it. Again, oh, this was just kind of showing the doji rule. Same thing over here on uh, Peloton. There's our doji sandwich. So you had a nice J-hook breakout 
you had a doji, which told us if it opened positive, there's a good possibility that this candle right here was going to be the same magnitude as this candle right here. So all we're doing is identifying the, the, the way human nature works time after time, the patterns that uh, tell us that you've got a high probability trade setup, not only a high probability direction, but the magnitude of that uh, move makes it worthwhile. Do you use the 3T line to take profits as the stock extends well above the T line? Yes, but I'll, uh, Adam, I'll show you another method, which is using the 5 or the 10 minute chart. Yes, we'll get to that here in a second. Okay, so where are we? So this is the advantage of our chat room. Because people are watching Codex. They keep asking, oh, should we be buying? Should we be buying? Well, we can see there's kind of a wedge formation setting up. And it really hadn't broken out. So yesterday, we're looking at it because it kind of broke out through the T-line. And this is what we call the double doji setup. I don't know whether I made this big enough, but there's a doji that kind of failed right here at the, list, the resistance line. And there's a pullback doji right here. This is the double doji setup, which means they're starting up, they're consolidating, they're consolidating. Now what do we know about the double doji setup? If it opens positive the next day, you buy immediately because it's probably going to do the same magnitude candle as this. And if it did, what was it telling us about our breakout level? They were probably breaching that breakout level. So this becomes an immediate buy just because of this whole setup. And if you're buying as a day trade, and you see it break out, you're probably going to make some good money because what's everybody else watching with watches the wedge type formations? They're buying. What's it telling us? We got kind of a rounded bottom, double doji, breakout capability. So we can be buying here. What would happen? Well, it didn't get up through the, uh, maybe wouldn't get up through the resistance level. You close it back out. So a lot of times the worst case scenario is you get into a position it's heading in the right direction, but it's not moving very big and get right back out of that trade at the end of the day. But the good side is we know what usually there's the results of these patterns. Big candle, double doji, big candle. So this, again, I was, oh, that's what I was saying. The benefit of the chat room is that we've got plenty of people watching different signals and patterns and asking about them. So I might not have ever noticed this, but I knew as soon as this opened positive today, you should be buying. Oh, I don't know. We'll go to empty. Remind me of uh, looking at that when we get to the live charts. Theoretically, couldn't you just use the same stock every day as a long, as long as bid ask? You could. There's two, two methods you can use, Steve. My method is each day I know that I can scan probably within 15, no more than 20 minutes for the best trade setups for the next day. All you have to do is have your pre-formulated signal and pattern uh, formulas in your scans, and that makes it very simple to uh, refresh each day and then look to see which one of those charts look the best. Or maybe you're just trading Apple or just trading Netflix. Yeah, you could trade those intraday as much as uh, uh, yeah, you, you just trade them. And that's that's what we're going to get to. The two the two type of tradings you have is trading a daily stock move or intraday trading, something that that moves around quite a bit. Does this system work for livestock commodities? Yes. John, that's what I usually trade. I trade soybeans, wheat, cattle, hogs. Uh, I used to trade cotton, but now you have to uh, cotton and uh, oh, what are the other ones in the sauce? Um, sugar, cocoa, 
the uh, dollar, gold, silver. And the nice thing about trading futures, coffee, there you go. Thank you, Bill. Um, tr nice thing about trading futures is there's only about 20 that you can really trade. And you can, once you know what you're looking for on a chart, and we'll do that when, when we go live. Um, it only takes a minute to go through 20 charts to see which ones have good setups. And more than likely, once you've gone through them, you probably don't have to go through them for another three or four days because you're probably only going to trade the one or two that really have good charts. And then when you're looking for new charts, two minutes, you're going to find the next uh, good uh, setups. Does the two EMA work better on futures? I don't know. Um, I use the same charts on futures as I do on stocks. When do you pay attention to the Bollinger Bands? Um, uh, Doug, I don't. Um, now, we've, we've had, had John Bollinger on a few times a while ago, but he even said that you don't use Bollinger Bands for buying or selling. They're not, not uh, I want to say, execution uh, indicators. They're telling you when you're starting to get too far out of a normal range that you might want to... Uh, by but what you will find is the t-line is much more effective at doing that so the other side of the coin is if you like bollinger bands put them on there anything that you can put on that might improve your trading uh put them there it's, there's nothing wrong with it if it doesn't work for you then you eventually take them back off codex traded down in after hours due to alleged treatment of code all right where do I learn how to scan? Doug, we usually do, I can do scanning sessions. Uh, in the members area, if you come in, if you become a member, uh, I guess, well, so I've got non-members here too. Our chat room or our website has tons of information about how you use candlestick uh, signals. We've got uh, oh, hundreds of pages. We've got formulas for putting the formulas on different scans, softwares like TC2000 or Metastock. Metastock already has all our formulas built into them. Same thing with NinjaTrader, uh, Thinkorswim, TradeStation. I don't know whether E-Trade has got them fixed yet or not. Uh, you can use the uh, Bollinger Bands for the squeeze breakouts. Um, uh, yes, uh, Mark, we do, and we can do that. We use, we usually do maybe, uh, we use the, bleh, let me go back and slow down here a little bit. Monday night, we have a session just like this, just for members. We go look at the stocks that we're in, how they're working, what other things are working, what, uh, what commodities are working? Should it be in gold stocks? What is gold doing? Um, what's crude oil doing? Should we be in that sector? And which stocks we've recommended? How are they doing? Do we hang on to them? What, what, what's direction? So we analyze that type of thing. Same type of thing that we're doing here on a Thursday night, except Thursday nights usually have more of a can. Oh, we're not even going to get through the can, let alone get to the live. But... We've got a chat room that's open all day long. And the nice thing about the chat room is there's about 100 and, no, 200 people in there. But you've got people that will put out ideas of which charts look good, which gives you a supply of charts to look at. And then if you want, you can say, well, what, what makes this a good looking chart? And somebody will tell you what signal. So it makes you, allows you to learn candlestick analysis a lot faster. And again, this is not rocket science. This is just identifying the signals and patterns that work very effectively. Um, and what we're trying to do is just the simple analysis of what the Japanese rice traders told us. We're not only moving in the right direction, but which, what signals tell us we're going to have a strong move in that direction. Uh, will your session on Saturday be like this? Will you stop every five seconds? 
Brad, no. I'm trying to get as much information. Uh, Saturday we go through, and I'll be showing the setups. I'll be showing the techniques. So I'll kind of go through here there real quick. But uh, you ever do a class on scanning using Metastock? Yes. Um, and Jeff Gibby actually comes on and shows how to use all that, all the software. Is this a horizontal wedge? Yes. All right, so what, basically we're finding the breakouts of different patterns. There's our McMuffin. So we knew that if it opened positive the next day, you'd have a good uh, probability it was going to trade positive. We know what a bobble breakout is. That's a, basically a J-hook pattern where you can actually see where the breakout is, and you know that you're going to be trading in a high probability direction. So Riot, I didn't even look to see what Riot did today, but there was another bobble breakout setting up. So we can find visually the patterns that have the big breakouts. Now, I always ask the rhetorical question, do I always get into positions that have big price moves like this? And the answer is no. But what we are doing is putting ourselves in situations where the probabilities of being in a big move like this are greatly in our favor. Uh, I used to trade the uh, indexes, but I now, yeah, I, if you're in the uh, options room slash futures room, yeah, we look at those charts. Uh, we can look at any of those charts any day. And I will usually say I'm, I'm buying lean hogs today or I'm shorting lean hogs or I'm buying soybeans. And we show why we're doing that or why I'm doing that. Uh, oh, uh, Jim, we might have to update those. I think they've moved a lot of that product over to the, the new website. Yeah, we'll, we'll get with Abe and see what the new uh, links are. Okay, so let's uh, speed right along here. So if we see something like this, we know what we need to see today. We need to see it open positive and trade positive. Well, space as we saw opened and then closed lower, so it didn't, wouldn't have executed. So it's very simple. We analyze which way the market is going, which signal and patterns are setting up, and then which ones are confirming correctly. So if we're doing intraday trading, and we're trading a stock, for example, and we know Netflix is trading positive, if we're trading off the 10-minute chart, and we know the stock trading positive, we know when to buy. There's our buy signal. This is called a stick sandwich. But it's just the fact that it did a bully signal above the T-line. When do we sell? Didn't close below the T-line. Close it right here. I don't know whether, when do we buy? There's our buy signal on lean hogs. There was our sell signal, an EV star signal. So if I'm trading off the 10-minute chart, I'm shorting. Staying short, staying short. Now I have a strong buy signal. Where do I like logically stop out? Right here at that level above that, that signal. If I'm buying, what do I want to see? It close up above the T-line. Where's the next target? right up here to the 50. Again, this is the 50 on the 10-minute chart, which everybody that's trading is watching those, or that level. 10-minute chart on live cattle. There's a bullish Harami right smack dab on the 50. What's that tell you? The selling stopped right smack dab on the 50. Now bullish confirmation. Buying, how long do you stay long in this position? There's our evening star signal and a close back below the T-line. You close it out. I'm not trying to buy at the very bottom. I'm not trying to sell at the very top. I'm trying to get this fat part here. The more correct trades I do, the higher the compounding effect will be, much greater than the risk factor of trying to anticipate when the return or when it's time to buy and when it's time to sell. A candlestick sell signal on the uh, the Dow on the 10-minute chart shows you when to sell, when to take profits, when to reshort. And if you're using the five-minute chart and you want a little bit quicker analysis, maybe right here, is it time to sell? 
It's not going through the 200. What's my, whoops, where was it? Yeah, you know, what do I want to do right here? What's my five-minute chart telling me? Whoops, the five minutes starts rolling over. That's telling me the 10 minutes not going to go through that level. Just very simple logic that if the five-minute chart is selling, selling off, whoops, went too far. That's a pretty good indication that they're not going this way. They're starting to sell off. It's time to take profits. And when do you go short? Well, now you got a bearish in, uh, Harami and a close below the T-line. Where's your next target? Back down to the 50. The 34 EMA just works pretty good. So I put that in as a secondary uh, uh, support and resistance. Bullish engulfing on the crude oil 10-minute chart. May not trade this all day long. Maybe traded in here, got back out. But blah, 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 buy signal right on the uh, 50. Bam, you get a quick move. Time to take profits and you move on to something else. I keep reiterating, this is not rocket science. If the 10 minute chart is starting to show me, it's starting to turn, and I flip to the five minute chart. Five minute chart looks like it's building up. Get ready for the 10 minute chart to confirm. So this was uh, this is the chart I was looking for. What was the alert? Look how far we are away from the T line on Amazon today. If I was day trading Amazon, I'm buying on the gap up. Bullish confirmation. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. I mean, there was just nothing obvious about any selling until you got the bearish harami and close back below the uh, T line. You took your profits. Again, very simple. Which way is the market going? Which way is your stock price going? And are you watching something that's going to be breaking out? If you're trading intraday, I use the 10-minute chart. If the 10-minute chart looks like it's starting to set up, I go to the 5-minute chart to see if it's going to confirm my 10-minute chart. And then if I'm getting ready to pull the trigger, I go down to the 1-minute chart to make sure the 1-minute chart isn't turning around, which means it's slowing down the 5-minute chart, which means it's not confirming the 10-minute chart. This is very difficult stuff to learn. It'll probably take you at least... 20 minutes to understand how to use all this. I mean, this is not rocket science. Okay, let's see. Did I forget stuff here? Whoops, I did. I wasn't looking. Uh, all right. Uh, if you get a buy signal and it hasn't gotten back above the T-line, you wait until it crosses the T-line to get in. Two different factors there. If it's if it's been trading right at the T line, let's see if I can find something. If it's been trading right near the T line, like right here, yeah, I might. Uh, you know, I'm that close. I'd rather give it a few more pennies or 20, 30, 40, 80 cents to confirm that it's going through the T line. If it's way far away from the T-line, and I'm trying to find something, I might buy knowing that it's going to at least go up and test the T-line. And I'll try to find some of those on the live charts. So if you're on a 10-minute chart, what does that do to the 8 EMA? It doesn't do anything. You're just using the 10-minute chart. There's your T-line. Works just the same as... Uh, whether you're on a daily chart, a monthly chart, or an hourly chart. Do you use trailing stops when you enter, given how fast price change? Yes, I usually do. If I shorted right here, and uh, actually, yeah, I can't do it in this case, but if I, uh, yeah, if I shorted, shorted, and now I'm down that far away from the T-line, I've got to stop up here. Um, I don't want to see it come back up through because I've already seen that I'm too far away. If I'm trading a stock, now let's say this was a stock, yeah, I'd always have a, a, a sell just below the T-line as you're moving up. Oh, boy, on the five-minute chart, 
Can you show an example of confirmation? Yeah, there's my five-minute chart. It's popped up. There's a shooting star. There's a left-right combo. Selling. There's the confirmation. You had all these sell signals. Stochastic's rolling over, and it finally closed below the T-line. That's telling me the bears are winning. I should be out of any longs, or I should be considering to go short. How do you know where the T-line will be to put in a stop? How do you know where the T-line will be? Uh, it's right there. It's, if the, this is trading right here, the T-line's right there. I mean, it's, it's, coming, it's coming with you. It's, it's very close. We you need to buy a T-line predictor add-on. Well, no, that is the predictor. Remember, candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. So the predictor is if you see a candlestick signal, the reason we're looking at it today is because it's a candlestick signal that worked very effectively. Then the T-line acts as a confirming indicator in two ways. If you're way too far away from the T-line, way down below the T-line and you see a buy signal, yeah, you buy on the first confirmation of that signal with the idea that the first target is going to be back up to the T-line. To exit 5-minute chart or 10-minute? Uh, I usually wait for the 10-minute. The 5-minute is telling me to get ready and you watch the five minute to see if it's going to make the 10 minute confirm. And as soon as the 10 minute confirms, I close out a position or I get into a position. Stocks go up and down all day long. I'd rather be in a trade for at least a couple of days. Uh, Lou, yes, that's, uh, again, that's uh, the difference between day trading and swing trading. Okay, so here's what's going on Saturday. It's advertised for an hour of intensive training, which we cram one hour into about three hours. So uh, if you've been to one of the sessions before, you know that it's not an hour, and you get a lot, lot more. Uh, Becky, do you have the link for everybody who hasn't uh, signed up yet? I guess I could do this. Can I do this? There we go. How about that? A lot of us prefer to hold for days. Yes, that's a that's a uh, that's a that's a swing trade. That's what I usually do. But yeah, with the volatility right now, there's a lot of people saying, "Well, shoot, I don't want to hold overnight. What can I do?" And that's where you just trade, get in in the morning, get out in the afternoon. If we sign up for class but we can't make it for some reason, will there be a recorded? Yes, all these sessions are recorded, especially for people that can't make it. The only disadvantage for uh, just getting a recording is if you had a question while we were going through, you'd have to come back later in the chat room or email me with the question. I just bought your day trading commodity series. Will you cover anything on Saturday? Oh, Tim, I don't know. Um, I, I, I would say no, because trading futures is just the same way as trading stocks. And we'll get, you know, we'll get to some of those right now. Um, let me go to the live charts. Anyways, these are very instructional sessions. They last two to three hours so you don't fall asleep like our two-day trainings. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on going short on individual stocks with the possibility of a halt? I don't know what that means. You can't ever tell when something's going to be halted. 
Um, okay, so now let's go to live charts. How do I do that? Like this, okay. Um, let me see. So let's go to something. Uh, soybeans. Uh, soybeans didn't do anything real active. I'm trying to find something that showed a lot of activity today. Uh, hogs, not real. Well, let's take a look at a hog chart. So here's the hog chart on the 10-minute chart. Trying to find something that would have shown some whole heck of a lot today. Uh, wheat. There it's one. So there's kind of your evening star signal closed below the T line if you went short. Now, notice what it did. I mean, up and down, up and down, and up and down. But what was the one factor that would have kept us short? Never got back up above the T line until right here. So we would have gotten ready to cover this if this candle had closed positive, which it didn't, which meant well, there was some more downside. Now, this was right at the end of the day. Maybe we'd have stopped out right here. But it was telling off. You put your stop right there because it came back up through that level. Where do you think it was heading to? Back up to the T line. Uh, let me see what crude oil did. Uh, I think it's the... Yeah, this is a 10-minute chart, and it's trading right now. So crude oil is up a dollar. Let's take a look at the daily chart. It's popped up, and I'm guessing crude oil has popped up, kind of doing a double bottom potential because of the uh, prospects of if, uh, and I'm just kind of putting pieces together. So, um, this looked like when it started this evening, came up. There's your morning star signal. That would have told me I could start buying now because of this signal, and stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Uh, let's see what the YMs did today. If, uh, if M. Uh, that's the 10-minute chart. Uh, didn't do... It yeah, didn't move... Well, maybe it did not. That's not right, is it? I don't think it gapped up like that. A lot of shorts are going to be scrambling, yes. Around, I don't know, somebody can see the futures. I knew when we started the futures on the Dow was up 812. And gold. Here's a 10-minute chart on gold. So when you look at some of these charts, I usually look at the daily and say, all right, is this moving around enough? Or does it look like it's got the potential of moving around? Now something like that or something like that tells me, oh, let's start looking at that. Um, so let's, uh, anyways, soybeans. Uh, Live cattle. Oh, I didn't do live cattle. Let's see what their chart looks like today. Okay, and something like that today. You can see. Oh, ooh. I don't know why that's not coming up right. That looks like it hit the limit up. But you can see what the patterns are on any trading entity on an intraday basis. So I trade off the 10-minute chart. It makes it very, very simple. Um, I'm looking at futures now. SP up 40. All right. Dow up 800. I think the limit is 800, but I thought I saw it up 812 at one time. 
All right, so let's take a gander here at what's happening in the markets. Let's go to our daily chart. Again, this is where just you know, stopping out all the uh, rhetoric that you hear Okay, the YMs are up 8.15. That's what I thought. When you trade the 10-minute chart, do you already know the direction you're looking for based on the daily? Pretty much. I want to see which direction it's heading. Now, I don't depend on that. I just want to get a feel for which direction something's heading. Let me... Uh, uh, I'm, let's say gold, this is the daily chart. Let's say this opened positive tomorrow. What would I have? I'd have a J-hook pattern setting up, which would give me more of an inclination, I guess this is after hours trading, that we're going to start heading up. So I'd probably be trading with my thought process a little bit more heading in that direction. All right, so... Anyways, that's what we're going to go through in much more detail uh, on Saturday. That's We're trying to explain it here in a matter of minutes. We'll spend 20 minutes on each uh, concept. How is the T-lines are just the eight exponential moving average? I'm not sure on this chart whether I can add a study. When I add a study, whoops, get back over here. At a study, it says moving average, so I put that on, hit set up. That's the 200 simple, and I click on it, and it creates that uh, that moving average. If I want to do it for the T line, I do the same thing, um, but do eight exponent. You just put put the T line on just as like you would any other moving average. Okay, so let's go back to our simple analysis of, uh, oh, there's the, no, that's the 60 minute. All right. Bottom of it. All right, so this gave us an idea of which direction we were heading. And what is our simple rule of the T line? You just have to assume that you're in an uptrend as long as you stay above the T-line. Look what it did today. And I, I point this out. I hope everybody's realizing what I'm saying when I point this out. Look where it came back to. Right smack dab to the T-line. And that's important because nobody has this on their chart. So when it comes back and hits it and bounces, it's not there on... 99.9999% of the people in the nation or in the world, it's hit a natural support level and bounced back up. So what does that tell us? Our very simple T-line rule. As long as they don't close below the T-line, you still have to assume we're in an uptrend. So right now the assumption is we're still in an uptrend. And what is still our logical target? coming up here. Now, if we're opening up big time tomorrow, 800 points puts us at the 2403 level, way up in this range. What's that tell us about our T-line? We're still well above the T-line. Not, yeah, not in this case, uh, yeah, you could consider it a double doji, but more in this case, the double doji is a, usually a doji, then a doji a little bit lower, then the next move pops up. This is basically telling us every time they pulled it back, it was doing a doji type day. Uh, all right, so now when you see yesterday the Dow was selling off, and it just looked like a dismal day that we were going to be moving sideways. There's all this negative stuff out in the market. Uh, 
that maybe we are going to roll over. And even if we just rolled over for a little bit, it was telling us that maybe we're going in this direction. Well, then yesterday they took it back up. Today they took it down right to the T-line and took it back up. Is that real bad? Well, it just basically tells us we're not selling off. And if you correlate that with the NASDAQ, look what the NASDAQ has done. It's come back up through the moving averages of the 200 and the 50 and actually pulled back and used those in the 3T line as support. What's that pretty much tell us? The bulls are definitely in control. Now, if they're going to open up 170 points tomorrow, what's this tell us? We've got to learn a little J-hook pattern. More than likely, we have more upside. Uh, Deborah, no. The T line, no. Remember, most uh, money managers don't give a hoot about technical analysis. To them, it's voodoo. It's their superior fundamental analysis that uh, that they're using. I bet you, dime to donuts, you've never ever talked with a money manager that didn't say, yeah, we're looking for good quality stocks and we're looking for this and that and they use, the, yeah, correct, they use the fundamentals. They're not going to say, oh, we use a technical uh, analysis to tell us when things are good or not. To most investors or people that are putting their money with somebody, that's not what they want to hear. Uh, about the training on Saturday or so. Uh, let's see. Uh, the time will be, I, I think it's 10 o'clock Eastern, so we can let the West Coast get up at a reasonable hour. But it's going to include kind of the script. We kind of went through the script notes of, of uh, what we're going to go through. We're going to be analyzing the chart setups, uh, that we can analyze and tell us where we have a high probability uh, of a breakout or what we expect after a specific candlestick uh, reversal. And then we will go much further into kind of, I mean, we can even stream along charts like this to say, all right, when, where are the signals? Where, and this is, I hit right on this. Notice when we started going short, not because we thought there was going to be a huge sell-off in the market. It just told us it was time to get our long positions and start adding short positions. And we just happened to be lucky to be in the right direction. Not lucky. We just happened to be in the right direction at the right time based upon that little signal right there. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Brad, and the reason I got out of investing was I was with Kidder Peabody. It was supposed to be, at that time, one of the uh, superior uh, brokerage firms on Wall Street. This was back in the mid-70s. And uh, they listened to their analysts. And if you were going to buy something and put it away, Yeah, you're probably going to eventually turn out right, except if you bought in 2007, you're asking yourself in 2009, what the heck happened? So, again, prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. Right now, we can analyze which way this market is going, which means we know which way the investor sentiment is moving right now. It uh, didn't work for E.F. Hutton, no. Um, uh, Will, that was just, uh, again, that wasn't me. That was this signal right here. There's your best friend, morning star signal, close above the T-line. So... Oh. Tell my wife that, uh, Steve. She sure doesn't listen to what I say. Um, but I was—I think I was telling the uh, 
options room today that I knew this was a reversal, but there was so much negative news. So many people say, now we're going down. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to hold off on saying anything. And I said, wait a minute. For 40 years, you've been watching candlestick charts. You know this is a major reversal. So that's when I went out. I think I put a YouTube out on that day saying this was the bottom. Now, I could have been wrong, but the probability said I was, would have been right. Uh, how many pounds of, we bought another 200 pounds of bird seeds today. So, um, that's right. Okay, I'm supposed to be showing something here. We did Codex. I better show it again. Because of the double doji setup right here. Now, a double doji in this case is, it does a doji. Then it pulls back and does another doji. What's this tell you? There's consolidation going on. Um, and then the bullish confirmation. So if you see something like that, there's your double doji. Look what happened. I mean, this is not an unusual situation. This is the normal situation. Double doji and bam. Look at the magnitude of this candle. Pretty much the same magnitude as this candle. So there are signals that are going to work much more beneficially for us just knowing what the, uh, the makeup of those signals are. Who wrote this? Oh, NVAX. Look what our kicker signal did right here. There's your strong result. That's what we look for kicker signals to do. Look what happened on ALLT today. There's your kicker signal bobble breakout. What's that pretty much tell us? The 50 is not acting as resistance anymore. You have a kicker signal that's your strongest handle candlestick signal, and you've broken out, I'd suspect wave three being the same as wave one down here. And HLIT, oh shoot, we're at 9.15. I've kept people way past time. Do we want to keep going? I mean, I've got a bunch more to look at here. All right, I just don't want people to get bored. What did I just do? HLIT, look at that little trend kicker type signal. Fry pan bottom breakout. More upside. You can finish your presenting and just don't, well, we could do that. Um, all right, I will keep going. Uh, Haley, we don't use Elliott Wave. Um, I forget what's his name that developed Elliott Wave. But he even said that his wave counts were very imprecise, unsophisticated. But what it did show us was prices move in waves. So I don't use anything more than wave one, wave two, wave three. Because my wave three might be my trade. When I'm done, I'm looking for other things. Um, Uh, okay. Prector. Prector. Bill, uh, that was, uh, yeah, over, oh, he did the Elliott Wave, yes. Yeah, not to. I'll do a 30-second story. Uh, I was invited to do a presentation for an investment, large investment group just north of Atlanta at one of the resorts up there. And I was squeezed in between Bob Prechter and Ralph Alcapora. 
and for some reason we're up in the mountain I guess it was up in the mountains and you had 45 minutes so Bob Prechter would come on and as soon as he got off he had one minute all the technicians would get you set up and then one minute you're ready to go can't remember whether it was no it was right after Ralph Acapora and then Bob Prechter was right behind me so in one minute I'm ready to go and just as I started talking my nose started bleeding like crazy for nothing so I had to go through the rest of the session with a big gauze over my nose trying to talk and breathe at the same time but uh, Bob Prechter was really impressed with that um, he was a good guy you know. uh, Dean, unless the uh, trade is real good yeah it doesn't matter what's day so remember we're buying and selling based upon what investor sentiment is telling us so if there's a good signal on Friday yeah I'll still be buying it the candles are like a kick in the head yeah a kick in the nose are the alerts like codex mostly happening on day trade room uh, no we that was in our uh, regular room tech somebody I mean people are following different stocks yeah, I wrote, yep, that, uh, what was it, B95 or whatever. So, uh, all right, let me zip through this. So you guys will be here when the sun comes up. There was our little trend kicker right here. Started your uptrend. So I'm just trying to point out why the kicker is very, uh, uh, very relevant. Okay, so here's some of the ones, this one was discussed in the room. Look what's happening, and look where it's happening. You got a fry pan bottom J-hook type pattern, and it's doing it right at the breakout level. If this opens positive, what's this tell us? Well, first of all, we have the implication that a J-hook pattern, wave three, is going to be the same as wave one, which tells you they're probably going through this level, and when they go through this level, what do you think everybody else is watching? That it went through this level. So if you're buying early, you're probably going to have a big trade. That was our same uh, analysis on Myrna today. Look where it broke out with a J-hook pattern. We're still in a strong uptrend on this one. Uh, Tim, there's probably, you know, it, it's, it's probably a little bit uh, out of the range. But I wouldn't be uh, be real adverse. Bah. To getting into it, because you can see what's happening. You take it up, pull it back. Take it up, pull it back. Take it up, pull it back, and then notice where they're pulling it back to, right to the T line. So what happens when they only pull it back to the T line and start the next pattern? Pretty good observation, or good probability that they're going to be breaking out through that resistance level. It's up really big. Percent. All right. That's, we had bought some today. Not because we're any great stock pickers. We're just looking at what everybody else whoops, is probably buying. And whoops, I could even go to this That's by mistake. But look how you could have traded it on a 10-minute chart today. There's your morning star signal off the 34 up through the T line. There's your doji sandwich breakout. There's your shooting star profit taking. Then there's your morning star signal again. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So trading off the 10 minute chart, the signals are exactly the same. If you want to trade even faster, there's your five minute chart. Still the same type of patterns. To 48. All right, we're going to have a big day now. This is uh, this is why when people say should I go short on such and such, I keep saying wait for confirmation because right now everybody's expecting big things to happen based upon uh, that every everybody's trying to make things better. They I mean they're they're trying to get this economy back on the road again. So there's Ping watching to see if this one can break out of the wedge formation. So 
Do I buy this one? No, I have this one on a watch list to see if it can break up through that upside move. C, whoops, C, I don't know where CGEN, CGEN might be right now, but kind of the same scenario. No, it isn't. Why do I have this one on here? <sighs> oh, just because of the channel. But that's not a good illustration. That must have been from earlier. The other ones are the fry pan bottoms. And what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? Oh, I know why they're not looking good, because we're on the hourly chart. Now let's take a look at ping. Whoops. No, I'm What's happening here? That's the daily. Uh, oh, I know why I was using this one. Look where the doji occurred. In your J-hook pattern. Right there on the uh, 50. Which told us that if it opened positive, what was it doing? A doji sandwich telling us it was breaking out. Look at the magnitude of this when everybody saw it was breaking out. So you can be buying right here, and then you're already profiting by the end of the day. Where is Guild trading right now? This has been fairly lethargic. Let me see if I can find this one over here. Yeah. It's trading at 88. All right, so that's why I can't find it. It's trading way up here. All right. I was telling, I forget who I was telling, one of my buddy's friend's daughter's boyfriend works for a guild, and he said, buy the stock, which is what everybody says. Why are you using a 3 EMA? It kind of confirms your... Uh, your T-line or your signals going through the T-line. Yeah, you need a screen stretcher. Okay, here's a fry pan bottom on blue. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one, but I bet you dined and done. Blue is trading up strong uh, after hours. I use Thinkorswim for my trades. Um... CGEN is now at 14.30. All right, so it's only up a little bit. I would suspect blue is probably up pretty good. Um, there's a fry pan bottom looking for the breakout. So the reason... You want to use patterns. Uh, this is that little slow fry pan bottom breakout, probably in another move like this. Zoom is down. All right. Blue is at 54. All right, so it's up two bucks. So it's going to open up here somewhere. So that makes the 50 your likely target because that's where the gap is. Uh, JD.com. There's your fry pan bottom breakout. So the reason you want to use the patterns is twofold. One, it gives you a high probability of the direction. And two, the magnitude of the return is usually much greater than just being an uptrending stock uh, during an uptrend. Oh, let's see, zoom at 145. Eh, you don't know. Might be doing a double doji type uh, setup. Profit taking. Yeah, with blue uh, gaps up, 
again, that's your target, is the 50 filling the gap. All right, so, and the fact that it's doing a fry pan bottom is gives you much better uh, prospects of a bigger price move than just, again, a merely an uptrending stock and an uptrend. There's kind of a little fry pan bottom. And if this one opens positive, IFRX, what do you got? You've got a bullish doji sandwich confirming a fry pan bottom bounce off the T-line. Nail might be coming back because I saw the uh, uh, after hours it was trading up a little bit, which I'm guessing could put you in a uh, situation where if they pop this up, now you're back into this trend. At least you could come back up to this level, which would still be about a 50% upside. And I don't know what some of these others, I know uh, this one was trading up a little bit after hours, which also puts you in the prospect of being in a, at least a wedge that would be taking you back up. Nail is up. Uh, okay, where did nail close? It closed at 10.83 and it's at 13. All right. And again, oh, let's see if I can get the YM on here. Uh, F dot YM. Looks like the YMs are up 880 right now at the 24. Oh, that, there it is right there. Is that it? Am I on the daily chart? This is the E-mini Dow, all right. Whoops, I'm looking at the wrong thing. 883. Okay, let's get through some of this. Everybody's going to be waking up everybody as they climb into bed. There's another breakout, BTAI. I'm guessing this one is probably going to be trading positive tomorrow. And C, crowd uh, strike. There's your slow curve fry pan bottom, came up through the 200. Wave one, wave two. Wave three could be the same magnitude as this right here. So not only are we able to find things that are going to move up positive, but strong positive. This is what you want to look for, is the buy signals on a support level that everybody else is watching, and then you get buy confirmation. That was the exact reason for the zoom. Uh, did buy signals right here off a of support level, started that uptrend. Why, why? There's your bobble breakout. And what makes this so compelling? Once they hit here, well, where did they pull back to? Right smack dab to the T-line and couldn't close it below the T-line. What's this indicate? Maybe wave one. Wave three to the upside. All right, Dale. Um, yeah, hold on to your individual ones. When I get done here, which will be in a couple of minutes, then everybody can put in a, let's do a single request tonight. All right, here's your bullish flutter kicker setup. Notice where they took this. They gapped up from here to here and did a doji. If they open this positive tomorrow, you buy immediately because it tells you they're breaking out through the 50 and they're doing it with a bullish flutter kicker signal. Which tells you that's going to be wave one, wave two, wave three, probably taking you up to the 200-day uh, the moving average. So... You want to recognize things that tell you you got high probabilities. Look at your T-line crunch on this one. And they've closed up through the uh, T-line. This one's still in an uptrend. That's C, 
VGW. Um, two questions about measuring wave one, wave two. First, is it in the points or percentages? Second, is the uh, second wave measured from the bottom? Uh, no, you don't have to be that specific. All you have to do is see that it's a pullback, which is now a wave. And then what's the uh, measurement of wave three? Just approximately the same magnitude as wave one. But what's the most important feature of wave three? If it starts in the next uptrend, what tells you when to sell? When you see a sell signal. So there's your bullish left right combo. What was another factor here? This little back move could never close below the T-line. Where do you think your next likely target's going to be? Up here at the 200. Yeah, it's not, it's a, not a specific number. It's just visually recognizing that another wave is starting. And sting. Oh, man. We haven't even... Sting. Looks like a bobble breakout. Failed up here. Now coming back up with a T-line crunch. If this one gets moving, breaking out, that could be your next target. There's your potential breakout, TNDM. The gold stocks are still acting well. Uh, Royal, that's Royal Gold. Oops. There's your uptrend in uh, Barracks Gold, and this is what gold is actually doing, still in a slow, steady uptrend, doing some backing and filling. I forgot to even do the ones that we're in. There's your J-hook pattern on you, OSUR. Notice this. They couldn't close it below the T-line, and they kept bouncing it up off the T-line. Numa, another gold stock. You just stay long on this one. Now, uh, we did Myrna because of its J-hook pattern breakout, which means, bah humbug, thought I'd just fly right through this. Look at the J-hook pattern on CGEN. Notice what the effect of the J-hook. They couldn't close it back below the T-line. Ego, another uh, J-hook pattern. You can be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. We recommended this one because of the bobble breakout J-hook pattern. And you can still buy this one on positive trading tomorrow because that would give you a doji sandwich still completing wave three. Did you say work was down after hours? We were watching this one on the basis that right about here is a breakout level with a J-hook type pattern. You could buy this one if it comes up through that level. Cry looks like a bobble set up right here at the 34. If this comes up through the 34, where do you think it's going to? The 50. Why? Because that's what everybody else is watching. They're not going to sell until it gets there. That's what's, what makes those uh, moving averages act like magnets. 45 degree. That's a big move. And then you stay long as long as it stays above, uh, above the T line. And APTO, another one that had a doji sandwich, Breakout. There's your left-right combo breaking out of this little fry pan bottom. There's your doji sandwich taking you up above the 50. Now there's another doji sandwich potential taking you out through this level. Zeus, another doji sandwich potential. Now, you're in the overbought area. You had a shooting star. If it opens lower, they're probably coming back to test the T-line. If they open positive, you've got a doji sandwich continuing the uptrend. This one did a bearish engulfing signal below the T-line. This one should have been closed out today. Anytime you see a close, notice what type of signal. you got kind of a bearish flutter kicker 
uh, sending you in that direction. And Zoom we did. So here are the biggies. NVIDIA. Stay long. Amazon. Just stronger than bear's breath. Ever since that little scoop type breakout. And look at the magnitude of this move. So I'm showing these because if you uh, if you follow what the uh, charts are telling you, it's going to put you in situations. Look at your doji breakout. Now you have a shooting star. Where's your safety stop at the day's low? Tesla. Ever since a kicker type signal, wave one, wave two, where was wave three taking you? Right here. So now you watch this, what happens there. They gapped it through. What do you got going on? You're still in an uptrend. And Apple. Gapped up. Did it gap up? I didn't. Oh, there it is. That's why. Gapped up through the 50. Now, what do we usually look for? If they gap up in an overbought condition, you start looking for sell signals. But if they gap up through something that everybody else is watching, that's usually a strong indication there's going to be more upside because everybody and their brother could see that this could be a resistance level. And they opened it at the resistance level and went positive, indicating there's probably more upside. Okay, I guess I better call it quits there, or we'll be here till the cows come home. But this is the type of thing that we're going to be going through on Saturday. If you're a day trader, or you only want to be in for a day, we can, I will show about a half a dozen different candlestick setups that produce that high probability move. So. With that, if everybody wants to do signals, when I tell Jim to do the double line, just do one signal so we can get through fairly quick. So, Jim, do the double line. Okay. And then in 4.6 seconds, do the next double line. Is this dominoes? Just stay long. Look at your big belt hold, left-right combo. You just stay long in two and use the T-line as your stop. This one, you just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Boeing was having a hard time getting out of its own way. I wouldn't be long or short Boeing because of this. Um, now, I understand somebody said that Boeing has gone back to work pretty soon or are, are already. Um, uh, Taiwan semiconductor gap up, best friend. You stay long on this, I would put a sell stop at today's open. And Labu. Another one where you stay, stay long. Let's make this bigger. I don't know what that is, so we'll get rid of it. Came up through the 34. Next target is the 50, which means your uh, biotechs are going to be working well. Adobe, notice how they couldn't, they, once they came up through the 50, today they came back down and used the 50 and the 3T line as support, telling you they're probably going to be more upside. Navigode, you have that shooting star, you put your safety stop at today's low. And INO, another one that has the potential of breaking out, but you want to see, you do have a little morning star type signal with a gap up. If you're buying, you want to see it eventually get through this kind of this downtrend. Lulu didn't have, well, I was going to say, that's not what I remember, but Lulu, if it opens positive, what do you got for a breakout, a doji sandwich breakout? You can be buying on a positive open tomorrow. SBAC, just stay long. I wouldn't be buying here, but if I was long, I'd stay long. WORX, 
need needed to to show support you've had a big move you've had profit taking now you watch to see when the buying comes back in which would be on positive trading tomorrow an MBRX again same scenario notice that profit taking until you saw the buying you can still be buying this one if I was buying this one tomorrow, I'd use today's open as a stop. The Q's ended up like this. I'm guessing the Q's are way up. Uh, watch to see if the Q's can get up through the uh, T line. Space closed lower today. Uh oh. S P C E. This is what we wanted to see. We wanted to see it open positive and trade positive, breaking out. It didn't. If this one lollygags, I'd close it out, put my money someplace else, and be ready to buy if it comes back up through the 50s. Mine, stay long, especially if it breaks through this level, going to the 50. Wes needs to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, close out the position. It failed. Microsoft, just stay long. Notice how it supported on the 50, then gapped up again. That told you they were coming in with new force. We've Our LVGO has just been acting well. It did a dark cloud today, but it closed at the 3T line. Makes it very simple. It needs to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, you take profits with the anticipation they're bringing it back down to the uh, T line. Halliburton, you should have been out a couple of days ago, but if I heard or saw, I think it's trading back up in this range after hours. So if it pops back up above the T line, you can buy it back or you can buy it. And Bidu, you stay long. Not a real wild, exciting chart just yet. But uh, it's moving in the right direction. Comcast needs to open positive to stay long. Big bullish engulfing, then your best friend gap up. Micron looked pretty weak, but I'm guessing that with a closing right here, if you stayed in it, it has to open positive tomorrow to continue to stay in it. DEA, there's a J-hook pattern setting up. You can buy this one on positive trading. You didn't see the double line. Oh, man. Uh, okay, uh, it's a GPL. Uh, stay long on this as long as it stays above the 3T line. If it opens lower tomorrow, they're probably doing some more profit taking. What do they do with MAG today? MAG kind of in a bobble. I'd be ready to buy this if it came back up through the 200. Uh, Boeing up after hours, all right. I'm kind of suspecting that Trump is going to do everything possible to th get things back on or turn the economy back on. And I'm pretty much guessing that everything is going to be up tomorrow. Now, I say that. Remember, the futures are up 800 right now, which doesn't mean a hill of beans. When we wake up tomorrow, they could be down 100. So the best time to see uh, what the futures are doing is about five minutes before the market opens. J.P. Morgan, it's not good to see the banks selling off. Uh, usually the banks are kind of telling you the uptrend is in progress. So that's a little bit of a counter uh, action at this point. However, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. Um, uh, yep. Haley, do you have uh, do you have one of the books? A high profit candlestick uh Patterns book is your best. Let's see, Boeing at 146. 
All right, so that's back up in this range right here. All right. And IBB, whoops, IBB, you stay long on this one. Let's see, all right. Baba. Stay long, look at your kicker type signal, your J-hook pattern. So the, the benefit of uh, all this analysis of candlestick signals is you can identify which signals or patterns are telling you the bulls or how bullish a chart is. Visa, I would be out of this. I don't know whether I'd be shorting it because it looks like you're in a trend channel. I just wouldn't be in it right now. ETFC. Eh. Uh, I probably wouldn't be long or short this one. There's no direction to it. Um, uh, no. That has nothing to do with price. When somebody exercises an option, uh, no, it doesn't show up. It's just part of the volume. Okay. Oh, supposed to, oh, I'll remind members tomorrow. Or I guess we're changing the password. Um, Germans open up Monday. All right. Okay, Goldman. Five points, all right, that means it's holding the T-line. I haven't gotten to that yet, Jake. I would take a look at VNDA. I put little asterisks against some of these. I'd look at YY and CRWD. Those are my first, or the ones that I've kind of put asterisks to look at again. But i got to do some more analysis. Yes, sometimes when, um, that's a QCOM. Yeah, if I can't figure out what to do with it, I mean, you'll hear that technical sound. QCOM, you stay long as long as this stays above the uh, 50, more than likely going to the uh, 200. Okay, Mike, yep, but I, from what I hear, all brokerage firms seem to have those problems. Was that YY? Yes, yes. <laughs> YY is kind of your uh, J-hook pattern, wave one, potential for wave three. And uh, QCOM. Is that a double doji? No, usually a double doji uh, has a doji up here, then a pullback doji. This is just doji doji. Okay, I think we got everything. All right. Uh, for people coming to the to the uh, day trading, it's not exclusively for day trading. It's still illustrating the signals and patterns that are best for even getting the swing trades. So as we can see in Codex today, it didn't matter whether you were day trading this. What happened here? It didn't matter whether you were day trading this or swing trading. You were in at the right, right time. Uh, please, possible bullish flutter. Uh, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Best Buy. I had that written down somewhere.
Best Buy has the uh, uh, the potential if it opens positive tomorrow, it's your bullish flutter kicker, which would be a good indication that there's your first target, but there's your second target. So you could get a that could be about a seventy percent upside potential. Oh, I'm sorry, Bed Bath and Beyond. Best Buy is this one. Yep, sorry, Bed Bath and Beyond. Is your uh, on the close, uh, Isaac? And remember, oh, I don't know whether you do it on the close. I think the stochastics are the ones that are set on the close. I think the T line is just the eight exponential moving average. Okay. Well, kept you way past bedtime. So with that, everybody have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat rooms tomorrow. The day trading course will be recorded. So if you can't be there or you can't be there the whole time, as I say, the only disadvantage is when we go through it. If you had a question, you wouldn't be able to answer it, obviously, at that time. But if you go through it and you have a question, just email me the question or hit me in the uh, chat room. Okay, everybody, we'll see you bright and early in the morning. We'll see you then.